Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to a journey through photography. I am Mark Skinner. I'm here with my good friends, Kenneth Nelson and Greg Cleghorn. Today, we are going to be talking about the gifted student. Now, when I say the gifted student, I'm not talking about a student who's actually gifted. I mean, each of us were tasked with coming up with our own dream photography course that we either wished we had had while we were in school or we could give to a new generation of photographers. Now, Greg and I were lucky enough to be able to go to Israel when we were at Pratt. We spent a month there. It was a photojournalism course. We had a lot of fun. But as I was walking from my day job to lunch, I happened to see, and Ken, you can throw up the slide, on the ground, this will give you a clues to where I work very near the school. Shalom, a, shalom, Bakasha. An, an, an fl a flyer, <laughs> a flyer for Pratt and Berlin. So I looked up what Pratt and Berlin was because they didn't have that particular summer course when we were there. And it turns out that it's part of the writing program. I'm sure the folks will have a lot of fun. It's for the entire uh, summer. It's, I think it's a three credit course. But then I started thinking about That's what kind cool. of photography course could you have in Berlin? And I said, holy mackerel, Wetzler is where FICAs are made. And I thought about it, I said, my goodness, you could go to Wetzlar, you could go to the Bauhaus, you could go do the historical World War II uh, sites, you could pay tribute to the poor people who were uh, killed in the camps. But as a photographic expedition, would it be great to be a rising senior, to be able to go to Germany, go to Berlin, and then as part of your trip, you would receive maybe a weekend, maybe two weeks in, a Leica Deluxe 7. And then you're tasked with the rest of the summer to be uh, to use that camera in your photographic expedition. And, and in this way, you're sort of using Leica in its form. Now, of course, in my plan, the you don't have to take that camera. If you pay a little extra for that course, you'd be able to uh, upgrade because you know you're going to be taking that course for the credits or whatever. But I thought that would be really like the, the coolest uh, photography based course that I could think of to give to a new generation well, to be something where they got a camera, uh, particularly a, a nice camera like a Leica, and they could they could use it in uh, that area and just have a memory and a really fantastic souvenir. So what do you think? And it's only a train ride from Berlin to Wetzlar. So what do you guys think? And uh, who's up next? Ken? Well, I think you got something to say, Ken? Or No, go ahead. Something to share? No, I, I'm just, I mean, photographically, you know, Germany, yeah, Germany is, it's interesting visually, but um, I'd like to. I, I I think we had a chance to um, to go. Uh, yeah, well, thanks for Pratt or whoever put that together. The uh, the Pratt Israel course, you know, with the camera obscura in Israel was amazing for me. I uh, I thought. Um, I mean, it was it was just to be to be dropped in. Uh, you know, I, I remember Mark. I tell you, Mark, I was like, uh, you see the. Uh, the buses that you always see on CNN. And, uh, you know, there was just um, a tension there, but at the same time, uh, you knew you were in someplace special, you know, the all the holy sites and uh, the people themselves, the way, uh, um, you know, the, the we, I learned there were socially, there were uh, Jews and then there were Israelis and they were two big different things. Big different, yeah, they're two different things. And, uh, you know, um, when uh, Mark and I took a side trip to, uh, to Egypt or the land of the Kemetic people, um, shout out to Black History Month there, too. This, this is uh, you know, week two. But, um, yeah, there, there was just there is just a, a weird energy where people were saying, you know, when we were in Israel, it was like, oh, no, don't go to Egypt. You'll get robbed. You'll get this. They'll beat you up, blah, blah, blah. I was like. Well, I want to go. You know, I said out of Egypt, they call my son. I'm with that. I can go for that. <laughs> so um, uh, I just get a from the. Okay, this is probably the photojournalist that we're talking. But I, I enjoyed 
or not so much enjoyed is that I allowed the experience to happen. You know, seeing seeing the old Israeli men with the yarmulke and uh, walking down the street with an M16 slung over their back was a bit of a social shock for me. And um, yeah, the, the bomb scares and the blackouts were a little bit much, but we did go in the 80s, so. You know, no, it was, it was real. Different. You know, it was just real. I, that's one reason. Another reason why I wanted to do um, uh, photojournalism. You know, at and I found out uh, what I could at Pratt, and then went out and did it. So, um, yeah, social social situations are, are real, emotional, and they're they're an interesting uh, thing to capture. You know, we're bombarded day and night by images of uh, you know. I highly talented professional shooters who capture this stuff, you know, like in Ukraine or now in Turkey with the uh, earthquakes over there, or um, you know, just 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 to be able to be there and capture something that makes a social statement or captures the uh, humanness or the human nature or the human condition of you know people who are existing in our time is is appealing to me. So um, as far as a course. I'm very thankful for that uh, that course they offered uh, to Israel. So that's all I got. Okay. Well, all right. So you have no thoughts on a, a course where your kids would get a camera to actually use it? Oh yeah, I got plenty of thoughts on that. I thought I was giving uh, Ken Ken a shot to to save them because I'm just battling yak and yak. <laughs> okay. I would. Um just expand that just a little bit maybe not just limited to germany but maybe to japan uh, okay. for the japanese manufacturers as well to uh, give people an opportunity to not only shoot there now and you didn't specify whether these were uh gifted uh cameras to the student or were they purchased oh, the, by the, the student yeah, yeah the 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 actual camera would be a gift it? Okay, that's when they take the course, they get the camera. But if they don't want that particular camera and they want to buy something a little better, then they can't add money to it. But the gift is actually the Deluxe 7. But okay. if, let's say let's say your student has already got a, something like a Deluxe 7 because, it, you know, let's face it, it's a compact, it's a very capable camera and it's very it's got a lot going on. But sometimes people want something that's a little better. And if you, sometimes people they feel that, you know, it'd be great if they were giving me an M11. So they might some people have it. I don't. But some people would be able to you know, tack on some extra cash and, and buy something like that, or maybe an SL2. But, you know, the, the point is, you know, and I, the reason why I said specifically Leica and not any of the other manufacturers, you know, Japan or Sweden, because quite honestly, it was that flyer that I found on the ground that inspired that idea. Yeah. And I said, wow, you know, when we were at, you know, we had, uh, I think it was Rome and Israel, and we chose Israel uh, for that particular, uh, and it was specifically for photography. But, you know, these days, because like is so popular, uh, I find that, you know, every time I see anything that is uh, are related to art and any part of Germany, I, I instantly either go to one of two things, either Leica or I think of Bauhaus. And they're actually about four or five hours away from one another. And Dresden was also a big camera place too uh, apparently they or, they created or, the slr or, there. or all the artworks so, that the nazis stole huh? <laughs> yep 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 well i mean the main thing is is that look there are a lot of horrible things that happened 80 years ago yes and oh, there are yeah. a lot of things that happened recently that are fantastic they've unified they've you know many years ago they unified so you know like every other nation there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad a lot so of bad. you're right you're right no doubt there are a lot of people who were killed by the eastern and the eastern side 20 years I, after. So I I'm not trying to curious. what I'm trying to say is in the here and the now, if you're in your 20s, you can go pay your respects to what happened in World War II. But at the same time, you can embrace the idea of using a contemporary camera in the place where it's built, or not so much where it's built, but where where you know the company is. And you know, you get a chance to visit the plant. And you get to visit that Bauhaus, which was a fantastic school that the Nazis, you know, took, a, you know, destroyed. And, you know, uh, and uh, you can visit that now as a museum. So 
you know, unfortunately, every place has its history. No, fortunately, it's good few places had their history, you know. But again, that uh, what I was, I was totally thrown, but uh, thanks for clarification, you're um, outside looking in, you know, to a situation or being the gifted child by getting a gift of a camera. I was thinking about, you know, a, a talented student that would see and experience something different because of their personal insight or their artistic vision that that location would draw something out of them. That's what I was thinking when you said uh, uh, I'm gifted, sure that gifted I'm, student. Right, I, I think but that I you have to be a special kind of student to really take the study abroad of, of, in any field. So that goes, no, I shouldn't say goes without saying, but yeah, that's something that I just considered uh, an assumption. But, but well, let's go on. assumption. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I mean I, for me, for me, because I, I should have expected this from you, Mark, because you're you're technocrat. You like the gear and and all of that. But I, I would fear that while you were at the Leica factory or wherever, I would definitely track along to the Bauhaus. I would like to see their designs. Like yeah. their, their, their their designs were just uh, you know changed the world or changed the design uh, history had the history of design anyway. But um. I like getting out there, you know, I would be like Ken, I'd be on the street shooting, you know, just to see how people are living and, and doing what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. That that would interest me a whole lot more than, uh, exactly. than the, the mechanics of a of a fresh, you know, the new camera smell. <laughs> well, I, I think it'd be great to be able to do both since you're in on in that part of the world. Why not experience, you know, that entire thing? And that's what makes it, you know, such a great course. But Let's get on to Ken's because I don't want to take up too much time. Okay. All right. Right. <laughs> so I will start with what uh, by saying that in my junior year in high school, uh, we had a two semester course of Which a high school? high school of art and design and D, in New York and City. D. And it was a junior year for two semesters and the title of the class was called photo science. Right? And yes, and I don't know how available it was in any other school, but I just wish that there were a college level course of photo science that would have continued or at least uh, overlapped in the photo science of the high school. So this was this is picked up from wiki it's the science of photography and it basically describes what photo science for us was it's the science of photography and the use of chemistry and physics and all aspects of photography this applies to the camera the lenses physical operation of the camera electronic camera internals and the process of developing film in order to take and develop pictures properly so it, it, it's weird because in, in some ways when we were in college, it was sort of a trial by fire. It says, here's a dark room, here's paper, here's chemistry, have at it, right? And even in high school, as I talk about photo science, the, the course was not necessarily taught from an actual um, uh, book that was dedicated to high schoolers. The photo science course was actually taught from an army manual of photography what yes really? uh, yes and the wow. teacher yeah the teacher was teaching the course from an army photography manual wow and i thought that that was kind of interesting so we never got a book but we were given um mimeographs or copies of the book in order mm -hmm. to learn from so was i just he, uh, and i think that man? I don't recall if he was or wasn't. I think he may have been. He he, he probably was military, but I couldn't tell you which branch. Well, there you go. He qualified. He qualified, a, qualified. He qualified that. They chose he an army manual. So you guys could study from it. Yeah. What did you say, Mark? I said like a good military uh, person. He qualified and quantified. He qualified the material that was in that book being suitable for young people, and then he quantified it to, to meet the need by making copies for educational purposes. And and uh, it was a two semester but, course, but, and uh, I, I to add. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Ken. It was a two semester course, and it was great. 
Um, I was just looking at my um, transcript for that course, and I did pretty well on the first semester. Didn't do as well in the second semester. Um, I got a sort of like a B minus on the first semester. Got a probably a C plus on the second semester of that course. I don't know why, um, but it was really cool to go through that. And I just wish I think um, had if there were such a course, and I don't know if there is such a course in any technical college for photography. I would have assumed that there might have been, but I'm also assuming that there probably wasn't. So I think that this would have been a great adjunct to a course in photography. Hmm. I, th I think Brooks and Hallmark used to be very, very technical. What? Hmm. The, the Brooks Institute and uh, Hallmark School of Photography, th those two schools were extraordinarily technical and uh, they're gone now, both of them. Rochester Institute is, yeah, Rochester is still there and they still very technical, very precise on their photography. So, yeah. I mean, I could see, um, you know, using an ornament, ar blah, 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 using an army manual. Um, I mean, as a as a Navy guy myself, so I can understand uh, how they would take something like, uh, you know, like anything really and break it down to its elementals. And, uh, you know, because you have to be able to teach whatever discipline to a wide range of uh, aptitudes. You know, some people never finish high school. Some people, you know, have their degrees or, you know, but there, there's a lot to, um, you know, the, the, the way the military breaks stuff down and makes it uh, teachable to that near anybody, really. If you if you have a, you know, so, eyes to so see. Ken, so, so Ken, that would be, would, would you consider that that was a gift to you? Or is that something that you would gift to another generation or both? I would gift that to the current generation now mm -hmm. um, and going forward, because I think um, I think it, it would only benefit. It could only benefit. It, it couldn't it couldn't detract from uh, an education. And it, it's not to say that you need to actually go to college to get the book, but if it were just a hard copy of a book that you were able to get. Um, and some could say that there's actually a manual similar to that now, which would be Ansel Adams, the camera, uh, you know. The camera, uh, the, the, the print, print, and what I forgot, whatever, the third one. So yeah, those, those the, would be. The, negative, the camera, the negative, and then the print. Those are the yeah. three, the three books of the Ansel Adams Bible. Yeah. Well, talk talk about pre visualization pre visualization by Mr. Adams. You don't have to. No, I'm not. Oh, well, <laughs> it's not that's not really germane to this conversation, but it's the idea that you can if you know your craft, you can you can kind of pre visualize what the final result will be prior to making the exposure. That's really it. But we can okay, we can so cover that in another show. We can cover that another yeah pre visualization. I think that's most definitely a good topic for uh, for us to uh, delve into. I, I like the idea. Um, as far as that goes, I mean, I that that roll of film that I put in last last uh, episode we did, I still haven't gotten it back. So well, at this point, I'm I'm pretty much pre visualizing what what's on that roll because I have no idea at this point. Um, but um, that I mean, you cannot. I mean, the reason why, even even you know, even you guys as as pro studio guys or pro fashion guys, you know, uh, it was nice that you had your uh, exposure set, lighting was right, blah 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 blah. But what did you do before you went into like a major whatever? You shot Polaroids so that you could in sixty seconds you could see how that image looked, you know. So there, there's a big ups for you know digital that allows you know people in their train now for their uh, uh, instant gratification. You know, you take a shot, bam, you got the the image right there. You know, in in microseconds. And um, it's true. Yeah, I mean, you can't. I mean, no, these people aren't gonna go. These people go, aren't gonna go backwards on that. I mean, it's nice That's that people true. are uh, picking up you know analog and you know having a hard time buying film. <laughs> 
characters. But I, I think Ken's idea is really great. I think that would be a wonderful gift, whatever the current manual is, based on the current technology, from the Army Manual of Photography and how they approach it, whatever military branch you want to pick, I would presume. And I would I would certainly do that based on what, what Ken's saying. You know, and what you're saying, Greg, where they break it down to uh, a, in a way where everyone can understand what has to happen to create a quality photograph. Yeah, I, guess I mean, I heard that was why. Now, here's a quick side note. I heard that RAW was created. The RAW compression was created specifically for the military so that when there were photographers in the field who were not really uh, clean with their exposures or they didn't have a choice, they would be able to have enough information to recover if it was over uh, exposed or to uh, brighten up uh, the photograph it was if it was in too much shadow and and that's why the raw file format was created adobe worked with the Where military did you get to do that kid bit of news from uh, believe it or not i actually got that from a school portraiture company but uh there was a meeting i had gone to and uh then i looked it up and uh, there's an adobe white paper on the web about the creation of raw and that's why raw was created because if you remember there was a tag in image format and then the photographers all got together to pros to to create the uh joint photographers expert group which is a jpeg uh in order to make files transferable but raw was created later so that the military would have enough latitude in their um, files to to recover information uh, basically on reconnaissance. Mm, that makes sense. I like that. So Greg, um, what, okay. What would, what, gifted. what would be your, is he still there? Say again. What would be your dream course or your course that you wish that you could either gift to a new generation of photographers or one that you would wish you had had uh, while you were in school. Basically, one that would have made you. Say something. Something. Oh no, did we lose Greg? Oh, there we go. Here I am. There you go. Sorry about that. Don't know so what would, what would be your dream course? My dream course, um, wow. And you have to specify yeah. whether it be you or for another suit for new generation. Um well from now now I gotta address it from both sides. Now if it was if it was a gift that I would give uh the student, it would be, you know, uh something that would allow them to pursue what they want to pursue outside of the uh, outside of the um, curriculum that's being offered. That would be kind of my gift to them if they wanted a, you know, a camera and a computer would, would come with it as if it were a scholarship type of a deal so that they can explore, you know, explore their art the way they want to. But uh, if it were something for me on, on the giving out, it would be something like a I keep, keep thinking like doctors without borders, you know, I know a lot of the parents wouldn't care for that, but, you know, allow them to go into uh, funky, I mean, live, real situations, you know, if, <laughs> you know, see, have them tag, I know, God bless uh, Robert Kappa, but some, you know, go tag along with a war correspondent or uh, tag along with a, uh, uh, embedded with a military unit or or maybe you know so, so go side by side with the uh, doctors without borders you know because they obviously they go into hot spots and uh do stuff that's uh life and death right there and then and there you know just to see uh how how um how to capture emotions you know because there are people that that uh are kind of not connected you know they're so uh they may be uh, wrapped into, you know, social media or um, themselves, you know, or, or I, I remember a, uh, unfortunately, I hope this doesn't happen anymore, but there was a uh, um, a group of uh, 
high schoolers that uh, had just experienced a uh, um, a mass shooting. And when they were interviewed, um, someone that was telling one of them was telling their story, and the rest of them were just kind of. We lost your audio. We lost your audio. Jan, can you hear us? Can you no. hear me? Yes. So Greg, we've uh, lost you. I think Greg, you you may have to sign off and then sign back in. We've lost your audio. Check two. You got it now. Okay. Well, that's so we missed, once you said something about uh, the kids who are in a mass shooting. Then as soon as you said the word shooting, uh, the audio dropped. Wow. Well, what I, all I was saying was that the uh, um, they were interviewing one of them with the others sitting next to them. And none of them seemed to comfort them because the person was in distress. But I was wondering, you know, is it the thing that they're disconnected with their emotions or is it that they too were in shock? So that may not be fair. But, but a program or a school uh, gift that would send people out to experience, uh, you know, emotional events through the lens, you know, photojournalism and, and good art is about uh, capturing emotions and what's what's going on uh, for me. You know, that's my, my own opinion. And um, I think something like, you know, doctors with, the, with, you know, tagging along with the doctors without borders or being embedded with, uh, you know, with, uh, military members so that they can get an idea of, uh, you know, conflict, photographic conflict photography, you know, but that's, that's another here and there. So I'll leave it there. Okay. So you feel that your the gift to you would have been some sort of way of being embedded in a crisis situation while you were in school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, is that is that something you now you also mentioned for students, your gift to them would be an independent study to study what they want to do. Is there any structure that you would apply to that course or just an independent study course would be the gift that you give? I, I would want them to come back with. Minimum of two. Uh, thesis. Thesis series, a series of a series of images that told a real story of how of their expression and how it impacted them. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, Ken, you got any questions or comments? No. <laughs> Greg, I'm, Greg, you have any more to add? I'm good, man. Thanks for the yeah. topic. You know, I know you guys were going to say that I would have thought some sort of major comprehensive studio, blah, 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 blah. But no, I kept my thoughts on the people of today. So there you go. All right, here we go. We have been. And still the guys are. Who are going on. <laughs> a journey through photography. I'm Mark Skinner. I'm here with Greg Cleghorn and Kenneth Nelson. We hope you have a good day. Bye-bye. Happy Black History.